When you bought that last fragrance, have you ever thought about whether what you're smelling is natural or has been created in the lab? Does it matter to you or does it matter to the environment? Let's find out together in this video what hoops the companies jump through in order to earn your purchase. When Fougere Royale was launched in 1882, it was the first perfume to use cumarin, a vanilla smelling compound that was first made from tonga beans in 1820. The mix of cumarin, lavender and oak moss gave a rise to Fougere family of fragrances, which is still used as a base for perfumes today. Chanel No. 5 launched in 1921. It wasn't the first perfume to use aldehydes, but its overdose of the synthetic chemicals created an unnatural scent. A century later, perfume trends have gone to the opposite direction. Chanel No. 5 may still be popular, but people want new scents, made from natural ingredients. Brands love to talk about how their ingredients, like essential oils and sugarcane alcohol, come from plants. Some promise a clean perfume that doesn't have a long list of chemicals that are said to be bad for you. Others want to show that their scents have a small effect on the environment. A technology arms race has been sparked by the trend. Firminich is a big name in the world of fragrances and flavors. In 2020, they came out with Dreamwood, which is a biodegradable alternative to sandalwood. And previously, Firminich's competitor Givadon opened Blossom Lab, a mobile lab made out of repurposed shipping containers that will let the company process ingredients where they came from. Now that's sustainable! Industry experts say that supercritical CO2 extraction could be a way to use carbon dioxide that has already been captured to make ingredients that are safer and better for the environment. The method squeezes carbon dioxide into a liquid, which then acts as a solvent to pull out aroma compounds from plant materials like vanilla or rose. It's different from other ways of extracting because it doesn't leave behind any solvents or doesn't need to use a lot of heat. But the ingredients that give a perfume its smell are only a small part of its formula. Alcohol, which can make up at least 60% of the formula, is the main ingredient. The idea of recapturing carbon dioxide is used by Coty and Lanzatec to make ethanol, which is the chemical name for alcohol. The goal of this partnership is to use ethanol made from recycled industrial emissions to make most of Coty's perfumes, which include brands like Gucci and Lacoste. A lot of clean and green branding can be hard to understand for consumers. There isn't much scientific proof that many of the chemicals on the free from lists of clean brands are actually good or bad for you. And switching from synthetic ingredients to natural ones can have pros and cons. It's all natural. For reference, it takes about 10,000 pounds of rose petals to make one pound of rose oil. But if you use chemical synthesis, you can use half a gallon of oil to make half a gallon of rose oil. Sustainability is a different story, so it depends on which one you'll follow. Getting back to nature is not the only way to make a safer and more environmentally friendly perfume. But now that people care more about how cosmetics affect the environment, brands have a lot of reason to make their products as sustainable as possible. Or at least look like they are. A spade is a spade. Essential oils which are made from natural plant materials like bergamot and rose, using methods like cold pressing or hydro distillation, have become the battleground between natural and synthetic fragrances. Essential oils, unlike many synthetic ingredients, are not made from petrochemicals but rather from renewable resources. People who like them think they are more nuanced and complex than their chemical counterparts and have a link to the traditional ways of making perfume. Working with essential oils and pure plant materials instead of synthetic aroma chemicals creates dynamic fragrances with authenticity that connect the wearer to the plants and the place of origin. But if you look a little closer, the chemical structure of the molecules that give a scent is the same whether they come from an essential oil or are made in a lab. The only difference is in the branding. Let's say you make a fragrance and you claim that you have used Damasco's rose essential oil. That will be seen as a very good thing. On the other side, if you would say that you have used better Damascone, Citrenol, Geraniol and Panthenol alcohol, people would say, No, thank you. I don't want to touch that. When in reality, those are the four things that make roses smell like roses. 
people won't always know which version they are getting. In the US, regulators don't require ingredient labels to list what makes a product smell good. And in the European Union, labels only have to list certain allergens. On their websites, certain brands list every ingredients they use. Then consumers can compare them to lists of chemicals that should not be used. Even these labels don't say how much of each ingredient is in each bottle. In the US and EU, fragrance formulas can't be patented. So too much information would make it easy for people to copy their brands. In other words, it would essentially mean that the entire brand's intellectual property be on that label. Some plants and animals like musk deer and sandalwood are in danger of going extinct because of perfumery. Many perfume makers now use synthetic versions of these popular scents instead. When Julian Bendel started his brand Fujoy 1833 in Argentina in 2010, he used mostly natural ingredients because it was hard to get synthetic materials from abroad, mostly due to the high inflation and import restrictions. Since moving his factory to Italy, Bendel has been pushing for the use of synthetics and naturals that are made with more environmentally friendly methods, like fermentation. Instead of musk, the brand's Mascara Faro J starts with a Chiveton, which is made from citronella. But the alternatives are expensive. Chiveton can cost up to 7000 euro per kilo. The executive says that there are amazing synthetics that come from green sources or biotechnology, and continues to say that they use a lot of these to replace notes from animals, just like in the example before. But products like Mascara Faro J don't come cheap. A 100ml bottle of the scent costs $374 today. In the end, the most environmentally friendly thing a brand can do might not be the most profitable. Simply stop releasing so many f products. If brands really cared about sustainability, they wouldn't be putting out all these new products. There's already a lot on the market, and oftentimes new releases are just a repetition of previous versions. What do you think? Would you prefer natural or synthetical ingredients in your fragrance? Did this video surprise you and maybe change your previous opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please spray that like button and share it with a friend. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.